All right, so this is Kepler's second law, still using the University of Nebraska-Lincoln Planetary Orbit Simulator. And at the moment, our planet is set for parameters around Pluto. So it is moving very, very slowly. And we're since we're doing the second law, it's a bit going to be about the speed of the planet. So we're not really going to need to know the semi-minor or semi-major axis or the radial lines but it would be helpful to have a grid and it would be ha helpful to have some information about the Newtonian features which is mostly what is this velocity vector doing what is this velocity or this acceleration vector doing and what are those lines this is moving but it would probably be better if we set it to earth so we'll set it to earth and now we can see that the acceleration vector is pointed towards the star. The velocity vector is tangential to the path of motion. And both are changing over time. Now, when we go to the Kepler's second law part, we can actually do the section that talks about the second law. So Kepler said that a line joining the planet and the sun sweeps out equal areas during equal intervals of time. So if you take this sweep, right now we're going to do fractional sweeps of 1 16th of the, the period. So we do a sweep and we do another sweep. And these sweeps take the same amount of time and the area in here is the same size. We can change the, the size of these. So you know, if you make it smaller, then the area is smaller, but they're still the same. If you make it bigger, the areas are bigger, but they're still the same. But what's interesting is when you change the eccentricity. So if the same amount of time happens for each of those sections, then what does that mean about the speed of the planet when it passes through this section? Because it takes the same amount of time to get from here to here as the speed of the planet when it's moving through this section when it gets from here to here. This is a shorter length than this, but at the same amount of time, which means that during this area, when the, the planet is near periapsis, the closest point in its orbit to the star, it's going to be moving much faster than when it's in apoasis, when it's furthest point from the star. So, the question is, does it move faster at apoasis or periapsis? And what happens to the speed of the planet as you change the semi-major axis? And you can do that by looking here at the velocity. So, if we change this, how does that change the velocity? This is really more about the, the Kepler's third law, which is what we're going to get to in a second.